Years ago, Indians used to come to wear him in the summertime, and they called it Summer Home. The wording on this seal means Summer Home. Let's say that we are entering Wareham from Onset via Sandwich Road. On your left, you can see the Hilltop TV. As we go down the road, see Sandwich Road going straight ahead over the railroad tracks, over the bridge to the town of Wareham. Now, if we can turn this scene back to the year of 1879. The railroad came to Wareham in 1847 as the Cape Cod Railroad, later changed to the Old Colony Railroad. To the left of this scene is the Franconia Iron Works, which are long gone, and in this place is War's Marine Boatyard. To the right of that scene is a railroad station. This is the type where the train used to go through the station. It has been replaced with a brick station, which I will show you soon. The Wayham River used to be a very busy place as a great deal of goods were shipped by boat. Here is a vessel unloading goods at what is now Mary Bessie's Park. If we go down to Main Street, we come to E.K. Greer's Lumberyard. This is how it used to look years ago. Coming along Main Street with Captain to the Captain Kendrick House, the Wayham Historical Society has acquired this and they are now in the process of restoring it. Come a little further, we come to the Toby Homestead. The Toby family started the Tremont Nail Company, which has been going for over 150 years. One member built the Wayham Library, and they left money to build what is now the Toby Hospital. Now we look up Main Street. Notice all the trees that we used to have, one by one for some reason or other, they've been taken down. This scene was taken in 1903. My father bought this house in 1922, and I sold it in 1969. While we were living there, it looked like this. However, in September of 1938, it had a different appearance. After I sold it, the house had moved away, and we now have an old colony gas station there. Going up the street a little further, we come to the Courier Building. This is where the Wayham Courier was printed for a good many years. The paper has been sold to a Plymouth concern, and it is now printed in Plymouth. This building has been taken down, and a Cumberland Farms store is there. Now we come to the parade. November 11th, 1918. In those days, they called it Armistice Day. Today, it is Veterans Day. To the left of this scene, you'll see a sign that says Crocker's Market. Now, of course, we all know that the price of meat is out of sight. If we could go back to the year of 1905, the New Bedford Public Market was having a sale on sirloin steak for 12 cents a pound. On the corner of Main Street and Center Street was E.C. Robinson's store, where you could buy penny candy for one cent and ice cream cones for five cents. They sold newspapers, tobacco, fish and tackle. And that store has been removed and is now the Irene House of Flowers. This is Newman's store. At one time it was Jay Saddle, then it was Corn Silverman, and now it is Newman. In 1954, we had another flood, and at that time, Cornwall's store was on fire. In 1900, Cornwall Brothers started the furniture store and undertaking business in this building. This is now a lunchroom run by Freeman Keys. Here is the main street about 1903 or 4. We had streetcars from 1901 to 1935. Here was one of the closed type streetcars they used in the wintertime. Here was one of the open cars that they used to use in the summertime. And this is the mail car. It used to carry a mail from New Bedford to Buzzers Bay. The car barn is at the foot of Main Street. It is still there and now used for something else. Now let's go back to the Main Street. On the left of this scene, you will see a watering trough. That watering trough is still in Wareham, and this is how it looks today. To the left of that watering trough was E.N. Thompson's store, the supermarket of yesterday. As we step inside at the store, the front of the stores was ladies' wearing apparel, 
and the gentleman by the radiator is Pocky Bowles, the manager, and I will show you where he used to live a little later. Going down the store a little further, we had kitchen utensils and the shoe department. My father came to Wareham to work in the shoe department of that store, and here he is. Next to Thompson's store used to be the home of Dr. Moss. The lawn of this house is now where the savings bank is. This house has been taken down to make a parking lot for the savings bank. Going along a little further, we come to the theater and the drugstore and Jessup's jewelry store. Let's step inside of Jessup's jewelry store. Next to the drugstore used to be the fire station, and this is the first fire wagon that Wareham ever had. Now I'd like to show you decreases. This is the way it looks today and the way it used to look years ago. The first building on the corner used to be a barber shop and in the basement was the post office. Uh, this is the railroad station as it used to be. Now it has been taken down and make a parking lot and a comfort station. This is the National Bank. Years ago, where the pillows are, you used to go in, turn left for the savings bank, and turn right for the national bank. Now, both banks have their own building. Going along a little further, we come to the light company office. Before the light company had their office here, it used to be the office and home of Dr. Gleason. Around about 1909, Dr. Gleason built this home and office on the corner of High and Sawyer Street. His son, who was also a doctor, now uses it for his home and office. Now going back to Main Street, we come to the fire station. This is the fire apparatus that we have today. A great change from the old fire wagon. Before the fire station was located here, it used to be Sutter's Garage. And before Sutter had it, it used to be Sisson's Garage. And next door to that used to be Gallican's Livery Stable. Next to the Livery Stable used to be the Freight Station. Years ago, before we had trucks bringing freight to Wareham, all the stores in town where they want something from Boston, it would come down by freight car to this freight station. Then there was a local man in town that had a horse and wagon and later a Model T Ford truck. He would go to the station every day, and if there was anything for the stores, he would load it into his truck and bring it down to the stores. Now going along Main Street, we come to the Gateway Bus Garage. Next to the Gateway Bus Garage used to be the home of J.W. Hennessy. Now it is the home of Dr. Cooney. Going up Main Street to what we used to call the center, is the old town office and the F.L. Robbins store. F.L. Robbins store originally was the first Methodist church in Wareham. It was located on Tyonet Road next to the Center Cemetery. When the Methodist church built their church on Main Street, then this building was moved down and it was F.L. Robbins store. The Bicentennial Committee has acquired this building and they are in the process of restoring it to what it looked like when it was a church. Right out in front of the old town office, we used to have a watering trough. In the background, you can see the first congregational church that was built in 1905. Around 1908 or 9, when the Wareham water system went in, they started digging under the railroad tracks for the pipes. After they got part way under, they found out they didn't have permission from the railroad so they had to fill it in until they got permission. At one time, there was a railroad station of Parker Mills. Going over the railroad track, we come to the Fear and Tavern. This is now the home of the Wareham Historical Society. Going a little further down, we come to the Tremont Nail Company, which has been going continuously since 1819. Just beyond the Tremont Nail Company is a heroin run. This is the Reverend Roland Thatcher House. Reverend Roland Thatcher was the first minister of the Congregational Church. He was their minister from 1739 to 1775. 
The Reverend Roland Thatcher House used to be where the Roland Thatcher Nursing Home is today. During the construction of the nursing home, the Wayham Historical Society acquired a house and they moved it across 28 where it is now today and someday they plan to restore it. This is the Reverend Noble Everett House. He was the third minister of the Congregational Church. This is the house as it looks today. It's located on Gibbs Avenue and now belongs to Mr. Giberti. This is the first Congregational Church built in 1829 and burnt down in 1904. This is the first Congregational Church built in 1905 and the interior built, burnt in 1913. At that time, they decided to move it back and turn it, and in 1914, they built their present church. Here is the Wareham High School on Chapel Street. Around 1908 or 9, they built the intermediate school directly behind this school, and when that was finished, they moved the school to their present location on Gibbs Avenue, where it now serves as the kindergarten. Now let's go back on High Street to the Toby Hospital. Now as we go along High Street a little bit on the left, we come to this house. At one time it used to be a school. Going along a little further, we come to the Episcopal Church. Here is a scene of the Episcopal Church before the steeple was put on. Here is a scene from the other side. Here is the Kendrick House, as it used to look years ago. Going along High Street a little further, we come to the Catholic Church. This is how it looks today. Years ago, where the Catholic Church is today used to be a schoolhouse, and the church was next to it. Somewhere about 1918 or 20, this school burnt down. As an emergency measure, the town used this building for a schoolhouse. At that time, it was the Oddfellas Hall. Now, it is Coburn and Davison. Also, up near the old town office, it used to be a schoolhouse next door. Here is a class in front of that school. While we were going to these two schools, the town was very busy building us a new school, the Pilgrim Memorial School. This school was located where the Aruda Playground is today. This school was built about 1922 and burnt down. To replace that school, the town built the John Deacon School, and they have added to it since it was built. Years and years ago, Wareham used to have some one-room schoolhouses, and here is a street gallery in South Wareham coming along in front of the John Deacon School turning into the woods by Toby Road, used to be this one-room schoolhouse. The American Legion Hall in South Wareham was originally built as a two-room schoolhouse. Later, when the town didn't have any use for it, the American Legion acquired it. Here is a one-room schoolhouse, which is still in town. If you go down by the Agawam Cemetery, the Agawam Chapel, and next to that is this one-room schoolhouse. The Wareham Historical Society has it, and they are in process of a drive to raise money to restore it. Here is another one-room schoolhouse, which is still in town, in Tyhona. This is all boarded up, so I don't know what they're using it for. Now, if we go back to the John Deacon School, there is a road next to that, and it's called Station Street. If we went down that road years ago, we would come to the South Wareham Railroad Station. The little hand car there is what the railroad men used to inspect the rail. Going down that road a little further, we would come to the horseshoe Woods. Here is the scene inside the horseshoe wood. Also, somewhere in West Wareham used to be this grist mill. At one time, there was a chapel near the underpass. Here is the underpass in South Wareham. Near the underpass used to be D.C. Keyes' store and also the post office. Going along to Tremont, there was a railroad station there, and people could get off, go to the other side of the station, take another train to go to Marion, Mattapoisett, and Fairhaven. Here is the Tremont Railroad Station. Also in Tremont used to be an iron mill. Here is a scene inside of the iron mill. In that area we had the Tremont General Store. The store is still there and I understand it's an auction house now. Now let's go back to Wareham on High Street in front of the Catholic Church. Here was a scene many years ago. You notice we had dirt roads and to the left is a kerosene light for street lights. Going down the street a little further, we come to the home of E.K. Greer. Mr. Greer ran the Greer's Lumberyard at the foot of Main Street. This home is now the home and office of Dr. Carlson. Across the street from Mr. Greer's house used to be the home of Parky Bowles. When Mr. and Mrs. Bowles moved out, 
the house was taken down. Now I would like to take you to East Wyham, but on the way to East Wyham, I would like to stop at the Tempest Knob Railroad Station. If we would go over the Wyham Bridge down Minot Avenue to the road going to Parkwood Beach, if we would turn left and go about 500 feet to the railroad track, that was where the Tempest Knob Railroad Station used to be. And they had trains stopped at that station up until 1918. Now going on to East Wareham, we come to the Wareham Fire Station. Minot Avenue was the right of way for the streetcars. Here was a mill on Glen Charlie Road in East Wareham. Here was a scene inside of the mill. Uh, here's the Squirrel's Nest Inn, located across the street from the Elk's home. This inn burnt down about 1923. This is the New Bedford and Agawam Finishing Company, located next to the Elk's home, and the Agawam Nail Company. Here is the East Wareham Railroad Station, sometimes called Onset Junction, because passengers would get off of here and they take a horse guard to Onset. This shows the horse guard. A little later, when the electric cars came in, they could take an electric car to Onset. Now, let's go to Onset. Onset used to be one of the best summer resorts around here. Here is the Onset Railroad Station, located where the Ocean Spray Cranberry Place is today. Then they had a little steam train that ran along Riverside over the Dummy Bridge to Onset Avenue and to Shell Point. This engine used to scare the horses, so they had to camouflage the engine, and they called it the Dummy Railroad, and that's where Dummy Bridge got its name. After running the railroad for a little while, they found out that it cost too much to maintain it. So then they put on this horse and wagon to carry the passenger. This scene was taken about 1890, just the wagon going over Dummy Bridge. Now there was also another way of getting to Onset. Here is Kenny Saltwater Taffy. In back of Kenny Saltwater Taffy used to be a wharf where boats would come in from New Bedford to Martha's Vineyard and passengers get off there and go to Onset. Here is the scene along Onset Beach. Here is Onset Beach near the bathhouse. Onset had a number of places of entertainment. This is the Colonial Casino, where they used to have silent movies and vaudeville and bowling and dancing. When this scene was taken, they had ten bowling alleys and a dance hall on the second floor. After the theater went out of business, they expanded, and they finally ended up with twenty bowling alleys and the dance hall the full length of the second floor. They also had the Pastime Theater. On Onset Avenue used to be the Onset Theater and then there was the temple. At one time it was the Onset Temple, then it was the Temple Theater. However, it has been around for a long time. Here was a program of July 22nd, 1887. The fire department in Onset started somewhere in the 1890s. Their first fire station was on Onset Avenue, and it was also the waiting station for the horse car. Later they moved the fire station to East Central Avenue, and here is one of the first pieces of apparatus that Onset had. I understand the ladies in the community raised the money, and they still have this apparatus. It has been restored, and they are using it in parades and other exhibits. At one time, there used to be a water tower near Dummy Bridge, and the houses in that area used to reflect in the water. Here is Flagstaff Square in the center of Onset. In the center of Onset used to be the Ronald's Inn, one of the finest hotels in Onset. Also, there was the Glen Cove Hotel, another fine hotel in Onset. Here is a scene along Onset Avenue. Now, every town used to have their milkman. Nobody ever heard of pasteurizing or homogenizing in them days. Get your milk direct from the cow for eight cents a quart. Across from Kenny Saltwater Taffy used to be Holmes's Casino. They had ice cream, soda, souvenirs for the tourists. 
Here is the scene in front of Holmes' casino. Here is an electric car on its way to Point Independence. Near the Glen Cove Hotel used to be the Glen Cove Garage, one of the first filling stations around here. Years ago, if you wished to go from Onset to Point Independence, before the bridge was built, it was necessary for you to take this little ferry. Get on at one side, and the man would turn a crank and bring the ferry to the other side. Here is a scene of Onset Bay at night with all the yachts left set up. Thank you.